Chernobyl was blamed on human error, Fukushima on a tsunami, each disaster devastating. Could it happen in Canada? Follow the power lines in southern Ontario and chances are you'll end up at a nuclear plant. 18 of the 19 nuclear reactors in Canada are in Ontario, home to millions of people in the Great Lakes. That's why plants are under 24-hour surveillance. Working here means frequent scans for radiation, and in the event of an emergency, a plant can shut down in seconds. Each plant has massive emergency tents, casually called Fukushima tents, where giant trucks and generators are tethered to the ground just in case a massive storm hits. They're ready to be discharged at a second's notice. Pickering and Darlington have passed all safety inspections by the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission. Still, just the word nuclear scares a lot of people. What people don't know about it is, unfortunately, there's a lot of movies and so on and so forth that's produced showing the, the negative aspects of, uh, of nuclear generation. Um, and I will say that being here for 27 years, um, much of it is, is, uh, is, is overhyped and, uh, and all of it is really overhyped. It's it, because this place is extremely safe, very safe. So the, the chances of um, actually having a nuclear uh, emergency here at site would be the same as, as the same time you win a lottery, you're hit by a jumbo jet. But no one expected Fukushima. Even so, a tsunami combined with a power supply failure meant total meltdown. What happened after Fukushima is we did realize that, you know, there could be some cases where we may lose our electrical supply, for example, a large ice storm. So we've actually upgraded our systems and brought in additional emergency power to make sure that something like Fukushima could never happen here. Here are some safety features. That bridge-like structure supplies the backup power. That bulb-shaped one supplies coolant in case of an emergency. And that big tower is called a vacuum building, regulating pressure from the reactors. Of course, plants say they're safe, and federal regulators have to check and make sure. But what do the scientists think? In this lab, Professor John Luxett at Hamilton's McMaster University studies nuclear safety. Safety is an imperative. It must, must come first. And that is one of the reasons we still do research. Behind those yellowish windows are specially sealed radioactive spaces where he studies what happens when materials are exposed to radiation. And he assures us the radiation is not on right now. Certainly we have enough information to know that if you get a very high dose of radiation, that will cause them a serious internal organ damage. But at the same time, at the lower levels, we have the indication is that it's very difficult to determine that there is any detrimental impact. In Ontario, nuclear plants are only responsible to the edge of their property. Anything outside is the government's job. In the event of an emergency, there would be public announcements and tens of thousands of people who live in the area could be evacuated. But really, how worried are residents? And I know that uh, for a period of time, I had a little bag ready <laughs> with, you know, some dog food, some of our important papers or copies of our important papers ready to grab and, and go, right? But it's one of those things that, again, I think we sort of put in the back of our mind and we don't update and we don't. <laughs> so I think we, we need to mm. do that. We need to talk about it more and, and certainly yeah. prepare. After Fukushima, the province of Ontario mailed radiation pills to all residents within 10 kilometers of the Pickering plant. The pills are supposed to prevent cancer in people exposed to radiation, but some residents still have questions. Dave and Pina have been living in this area for almost a decade. So we do keep the pills uh, in a place where both of us know where they are. Um, and uh, even that, uh, I suppose, given that Pina is blind, um, I didn't realize till just now that uh, she wouldn't know how many she should take and how often. So another reason for us to actually talk about this a little bit more. On their daily walks, the plant is never far from view. But what will happen in an emergency still isn't really clear to them. We uh, have gotten a pamphlet a while back with the nuclear public safety pamphlet. And it does provide some background information, um, though it doesn't actually give us uh, 
places, we, uh, directions we're supposed to go if we get in the car to get out of here. So you can actually see the sirens. And if you look up at certain poles around Pickering, there are sirens which would sound to alert residents of a problem, a symbol that nuclear energy is never very far. I think as we gain more awareness uh, of our impact on the earth, um, then hopefully uh, one also gains some degree of responsibility uh, where they can in terms of uh, power usage and its impact on the earth. Almost everything we use needs electricity. And if we're going to exist so close to nuclear power, everyone should know the risks.